There's an amazing new unique weapon in Horizon Forbidden West that is really powerful and I got some tricks to make it even better. There are also other interesting new items you can use, a way to make the spear even stronger, many new legendary weapons and more. So I want to go over everything but let's start with that new far seen weapon called the Spectre Gauntlet. You can't miss it during the main story of the Burning Shores DLC. The fourth mission called Stars in Their Eyes gives you the new gun at the end. You can also upgrade it to unlock a new ammo type that you already saw in action. It's only the star of the show but first I want to look at the regular Shard Barrage which has a very bad accuracy if you use it on its own. That's why you want to use the weapon technique first to mark a spot on an enemy and then shoot as the bullets now become homing missiles. Amazing against flying machines or to target certain weak spots on enemies. Another huge plus is that the ammo is really cheap to craft so you're not punished for wanting to shoot it often. So if you already use the weapon then you know that it can overheat so then you have to wait a bit before you can use it again. This happens really fast after like 10 bullets if you hold the trigger but if you slowly tap R2 in a nice rhythm they can still shoot very fast but the bullets will not drain as fast meaning that you can shoot way more before it has to recharge. On the normal difficulty the weapon really slaps especially against the low level and small machines but in my experience on very hard it's just fine. Like again those homing missiles are great in certain situations but it doesn't do more damage than say a warrior bow. And it has some downsides like the damage is not increased against frozen enemies. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if it's intended. There was a bug like this also for the sharpshot bow around launch. And it also seems impossible to hit a resonator like Mark with this gun to create the blast so there's still enough reason to switch to other weapons. Although it does make a lot of the long-ranged weapons that are way more expensive a bit less needed because by upgrading the Spectre Gauntlet which is also needed for a trophy you unlock the railgun ammo. This lets you charge up this incredibly powerful and long-range laser that can deal a ton of damage. So to get the required material for this upgrade you need to complete the side quest in his wake and it starts in fleet's end and you should see it immediately after getting the weapon. And at the end of the quest you can loot the item and then go to the workbench to get the first and final upgrade. And again this one is wild. After a 2 second charge up time you unleash this laser that deals some average damage. But also here you want to hit an enemy with the weapon technique first to put a marking on the target. Because then hitting that spot will significantly increase the damage and also cause an explosion that will hit other parts of the machine as well. It's always smart to make sure an enemy has a mark first before you shoot them with the laser. Especially great when standing at long range as then the enemy is unable to react because they're interrupted by every blast. Focus on the weak spots and they can kill enemies with a few lasers even on a higher difficulty. And by the way a nice fact the weapon technique mark will switch color when you switch ammo types so you can use them for both ammo types. It's only harder to pull off the laser when in direct combat a smoke bomb can help and give you time to do one laser but otherwise like in direct combat the shard barrage works better and cool is that you can start a new game plus with this weapon and then use it throughout the story of the base game which is really cool as well. Same is the case for the new legendary weapons in the DLC so let's go over them of course if you like the videos so far then leaving a like would really be awesome and subscribe for more Forbidden West content like this. Every weapon type in the game except for the trip caster seems to have a new legendary weapon and they mostly just give you new ammo options that first weren't available on legendary items in the main game. Like I immediately got the eye of the storm warrior bow so I'm able to apply frost, shock and acid way faster with the spread shot weapon technique where you fire five arrows at once. I just wish though that all these weapons like looked a bit more appealing feeling like they now all have this uninspired look that doesn't make them stand out as weapons made by the Gwen. Now the best looking new weapon which doesn't say a lot but still it's the legendary rope caster. It's also the first legendary rope caster in the game so I will totally be using the weapon now more often. So to buy these items at the hunter fender in fleet's end you need the new brimshine currency that you can get through multiple ways. So one nice one is by completing the seven delver trinkets. This leads you to a chest which contains 15 of these crystals. 
Link to a guide from 100% Guides in the video description. So you can easily get them for yourself. There are also new arena challenges that unlock after completing the main story of the DLC. So then you have to go back to the base game in order to do them. They are challenging, but also gives you this resource and some nice new elite coils. But still, the easiest way is finding them in the world by creating a job for one of the items in one of the fleet ends fenders and then following the mission markers. I shared that tip and way more in my general DLC video. Totally check it out if you haven't already. I will leave a link to it in the video description. And turns out that you actually need Brimshine to upgrade the new weapons and armor as well at the workbench, making the resource even more valuable. In that previous video, I also went over the new outfits and I told you about the legendary Blossling that you can find during the third main mission in a chest that is hard to miss. And I now used it and it's really amazing at applying elemental effects. Like two shots is enough to freeze a Tremor Tusk on very hard which is insane of course i have some like mods on it but still an amazing weapon thanks to average clan capital and joyer for noting that there's also a legendary spike thrower you get from the a friend in the dark side quest that you can do after completing the relic rune that you find over here on the map then just look around in this area after completing that relic rune and they can start the quest. At the end of it, you get the spike thrower that looks awesome with the plasma spikes and it can be pretty good too. And again, maybe there's a legendary trip caster that we don't know about yet. If you found anything in the DLC, let me know in the comments. Again, these legendary weapons are great to get, to upgrade, but not really that exciting. While I do think that some of the new skills and tools are really impactful. I already mentioned the smoke bomb and well, actually there's a new skill for it, a smoke bomb heal. And if you unlock it, it will also change the icon of the smoke bomb and yeah, heal you after using it. I now tried it a ton and it's quite significant. Like if you stay in the smoke, the healing effect will also last longer than the stun effect on enemies. So. I totally recommend it. And yes, you already saw me use those shields that were first exclusive to certain trip casters. Now they become a tool after unlocking the shield drop skill, meaning you can easily drop them down in combination with any weapon and then let them block some incoming projectiles. They're still not amazing as machines can easily destroy them when they get close enough, but they're cheap to make. So I like to use them and you can normally carry three of them, but with the new drop shield capacity perk, you can carry up to 12. So they can use it way more often before you have to craft them again in the tools menu and you by the way find that perk on certain outfits or you can buy the weave at the stitcher in fleet's end and there you also find the weave for the elemental spear so you of course want to unlock the skill first for two skill points and after you do you get special elemental capsules in your tool menu that you can then easily apply when you do this it adds the chosen element to your melee hits for around the 25 seconds so they can apply it by dealing damage with your spear although you will notice that it doesn't do a lot. Now it's mostly the Resonator Blast that now deals a ton of elemental damage as well, so apply them with a heavy attack after your spear is fully charged to easily build up that elemental effect. Now what is interesting is that the Resonator Marks always apply the element as long as you apply them while having a capsule on your weapon. So even if you hit these marks after the capsule has run out, you will still be able to build up the element. So what you can do is put a couple of Resonator Marks marks on an enemy when you got the capsule on your spear and then leave them there now wait till the current elemental effect runs out and then immediately shoot these resonator marks again and they will then immediately apply the effect without having to hit the machine. It's a nice and cheap way to apply an element to any machine instead of having to use an elemental weapon as it only costs 4 metal shards and 1 elemental resource to craft 4 of these capsules. And it's great for a purely melee playstyle too, although the higher the difficulty, the less the elemental buildup will be. The Elemental Fury Valor Surge does help with this. And again, you can also get the Elemental Spear plus 2 Weave from the shop to increase the duration from 25 to 40 seconds and it adds a ton of extra elemental buildup as well. And what is also nice is that with the new machine grapple skill you can apply another resonator mark that will also deal elemental damage if you have a capsule active. Like this overall my favorite new skill because of the really cool animation it gives melee another much needed boost while also being useful for any other playstyle. So if you're not aware you can trigger this skill after knocking down an enemy or after shocking a target. I then just try to get as close as possible hit x there will be a pull caster icon that appears and they can pull yourself to the enemy to do an easy quick time event and boom you deal damage 
and leave a resonator mark if you did the quick time event right. Now pro tip though is that you can still do a critical strike if you have the time because then you can do the machine grapple strike right after for double damage. If you do the machine grapple first then you cannot do a critical strike anymore. The skill also gives some time to breathe during chaotic encounters as Aloy is untouchable during the animation and for the melee playstyle it's amazing to have another resonator mark very quickly after you probably applied the first one by knocking down an enemy. Curse to hear which new weapons and skills you like or maybe even Valor searches you are using. Drop it in the comments. Subscribe for more Horizon content of course. A like would really help me out and check out that previous big DLC roundup video with tips on how to navigate the burning shores by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.